بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وعز المرسلين محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين When it comes to Islam and Muslims we have so many things to talk about When the media is talking about Islam in a way or another downgrading Islam or showing the bad image of Islam and when some Muslims trying to defend the pure image of Islam and when we see all this struggle among so many doctrines, philosophies in the media between Muslims and non-Muslims, Islam and other ideologies, definitely we have to understand what's going on. Is it right that Islam is considering all bad things when it comes to non-Muslims and rejecting any peaceful situation? Is it right that Islam is building a very barbaric image of its followers? Is it right Islam is a religion that does not consider the peaceful dimension and the moral and the morality when it comes to building generations? Is it right the followers of Islam are the problem in this earth? Is it right all that because of Islam and because of its teachings. People are dying in Syria. People are getting murdered, slaughtered, killed in Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, Africa, just name it. The whole world watched so many innocent people got killed in USA in 9-11, so many innocent people got killed in so many other places. Is that Islam? Is that the consequences of Islam? The consequences of the doctrine of Islam? The, con the consequences of the teachings of Islam? The consequences in general of religion? Is it right that religion is the opium of the people? Is it right that religion does not allow us to change and get improved? And whenever there is a handicap, static society, that because of religion? So all these questions, they need an answer or they need answers. Some of it is related to Islam, some of it is beyond Islam, is related to the religion in general. Brothers and sisters, it is very important, it is very important to distinguish between the ideology and its followers. Very important. You cannot accuse my ideology if certain groups are misbehaving. If Muslims were to be good, if any person who belongs to Islam were, be, were to be good, then why there is heaven and hellfire? Why there is punishment? Is punishment just for non-Muslims? No. Why there is something called just and unjust person? Why there is a Muslim and a believer? Islam definitely has its identity. And Islam try to build the Muslims based on that peaceful, moral, good identity. If some Muslims, they misunderstood 
if some Muslims, they misbehaved, if some Muslims, they went astray, then this is not the problem of Islam. And more than that, if some fatawa, or even what so-called scholars, they delivered a wrong message about this religion, they delivered a wrong fatwa against religion and against the humanity, that's not because of Islam. It's either because of their limited understanding, which is, has nothing to do with religion, has to do with their capabilities, or because of politics, that letting them getting the money and the spreading their wrong ideology. This is what's going on nowadays. While if I look at the Muslims and then I come to the thoughts, to the doctrine, let's look at our real life nowadays. If you tell me, oh, people are getting murdered, slaughtered in a very in, inhumane, unhumane way, and this, the guy is saying Allahu Akbar or God is great or whatever. You tell me this is Islam, I will tell you no, this is not Islam. You tell me this is a Muslim, I tell you maybe he's a hypocrite. Maybe he's pretending he's a Muslim. And overall, Islam denies that. And more than that, why you are only looking at this person? Why do not look at the other Muslims who are against his act, who are fighting his, his injustice, who are defending humanity because he is unhuman? <coughs> Why don't you pay attention to that? Why you only show me Muslims are killing, you know, violent, and you do not show me the Muslims who are going against those so-called Muslims? Why? Why you are so unfair? Why? That's a question I have the right to ask. Those who are nowadays fighting the terrorists, are in those are Muslims fighting those terrorists? Why don't you mention this? It's a question. You have to answer this. You have to think about it. You have to pay attention to it. Yes, from the day one of Islam, People, because of their personal advantages, they misused religion as any ideology or as any powerful authority. People, they might misuse it. And the Prophet warned us about those people. And he said, the person who has to lead the Muslims, he had to have enough knowledge and enough piety that means he is not he is not he has not not just to be muslim he has to be pious he has to have good heart he has to have common sense he has to have rational thinking and above all he has to be just N knowing the real rulings of islam Nowadays, what we see, a person who studied for a couple of years, all of a sudden now he is, you know, issuing verdicts, fatawa. While a real scholar, it might take him about 30 years studying in order to say one fatwa. Maybe more than 30 years sometimes. And he is hesitant, I might be right or wrong. In order to come to a to a, a state of legislation, so I call you a scholar, a real scholar, a legislator, a mushtahid, that means you have to spend so many years and understand so many opinions. And as you know, half of the knowledge is a killer. Half of the knowledge is worse than ignorance. And reading in one book is more dangerous. So when we talk about Islam, how did Islam establish 
the identity of Muslims. That is very important. Let's see the attributes of this identity. When I say Muslim, what does it mean? Yes, you have to believe in one God and Muhammad is his messenger. And by that, you believe in all the prophets before Muhammad As you know, as a Muslim, I cannot deny Jesus. As a Muslim, I cannot deny Moses. As a Muslim, I cannot deny Abraham. So how did Islam build this kind of identity? Let's read Islamic heritage. First of all, who is the Muslim? The Muslim, man salima nasu lisanahu. When you are a Muslim, that means your hurt, you are not going to hurt others. And that means you are not a problem in the society. Man salima nas. And Salim and Nas. So Nas, they are happy. They are safe. From what? He's not, he's not gonna use his hand against them. He is not gonna be stealing them, killing them, cheating on them, destroying their properties, hurting his neighbors, stealing from others. This is not Muslim. Also, when it comes to the words, he does not say a bad word. He does not backbite. He does not show any disrespectful way of talking. He respects others, whether they are among him or they are away from him. From him. And also, when I say a Muslim, that means I'm talking about a peaceful human, by all means. A human, when he meets you, the first word he would say, peace be, peace be upon you. That's a Muslim. The first meeting with a Muslim is to declare his peaceful identity. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you as a Muslim. That means I'm declaring that I am a peaceful person. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to harm you. I'm not going to downgrade you. This is the first sign that Islam built. Even when you see people, you wanna, rather than saying hi, bye, how are you? You say the first thing, Assalamu Alaikum. Rather than meeting with a person and right away, you know, you say, hey, what up dog? Or, you know, dude or whatever. No, say, use peaceful words. When they are hearing you, that means you have, when you know that everyone is hearing you, that means you have to watch your mouth, pick the proper words. You do not just say, hi. Okay, what does hi mean? It's a sudden, you know, like hello. You know. No, I have a better way. I say, peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum. That's very powerful meaning, very powerful declaration. So this is one of the attributes Islam put for a Muslim. Secondly, whenever the Quran, whenever the Muslim is reading the Quran, every surah except only one surah, 114 chapters except only one, every chapter starts with an ayah, said verse, said Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah the all merciful every chapter except one every chapter you open the first thing you have to remember that Allah is merciful therefore you have to be merciful 
yeah, because the Prophet said, "Tahallaku bi akhlaqillah." If Allah is merciful, then you have to be merciful. If Allah is nice, then you have to be nice. If Allah is kind, then you have to be kind. If Allah is just, then you have to be just. And that's why we have so many narrations about the justice, for instance. That's another attribute of a Muslim identity. Justice. In Allah, God, Ya'buru bil adli wal ihsan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered you as a Muslim to be just. Even if that justice is against your personal benefits, you have to be just. Even that justice is going to make you lose money, you have to be just. Even if you are be by being in justice, you might lose certain benefits here or there, you have to be just. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان. Then be nice with others. Be helpful. It's not just to be just. It's not just to give me what I want. Go beyond that. Be more merciful. Be kind. وَإِتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى And be nice with your relatives. Starting from your mom. Your mom is old. Do not just take her and Throw her away in a shelter. Hey, 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 she's your mom. She needs you. Be nice with them. If she needs money, give her what she wants. Same thing with your father. Same thing if you can help your brothers, sisters. Same thing if you can help your relatives. And you are not allowed to be sinful, to be a wrongdoer. You can't. And this is another beautiful image, another beautiful attribute of that identity that the Western media and some very muted, mutant ideology here in the Middle East is trying us trying their best not to show us what's going on, to show us this beautiful message. To show us Islam is just about murdering. Islam does not, has no place for other opinions. Islam has no place for being kind. No, 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 this is not Islam. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adl wal ihsan. To be just and to be nice, kind, helpful, supportive. This is another good attribute. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rafiq <coughs> yuhibbu rafiq Some narration said Allah is kind and love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves kindness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kind and he loves kindness. And he gives on kindness, upon kindness, what he does not give or more than giving upon other things. To be kind. Allah is kind, therefore be kind. These are some important attributes. When you say a Muslim, I have to say it there. Yet, sometimes we don't see it. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ If you want to say to people, I am Muslim, First, when you are talking to them about Islam, show them the good doing. Show them the good behave. Show them your peaceful identity. Show them that you are constructive, you are a constructive element, not a destructive one. Who is better than such a person, the Qur'an here is saying. Who is better than such a person who, call, who calls upon the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do good in the society, and then after doing good, and then after helping others, he would say, I am a Muslim. Not the opposite. There is no reason and no place for you if you say I am Muslim 
and you steal. If you say, I am a Muslim, and uh, you cheat, and Islam is saying, Laysa minna, man ghashana, laysa minna. If you cheat, you are not one of us. There is no place for you in Islam if you are unjust. There is no place for you in Islam if you, you misuse your authority for your personal benefit. There is no place for you in Islam if what all you care about is to live your, your way and eat your way and drink your way and enjoy life your way with no respecting with no, with any with no respect to any islamic rulings or islamic laws it's no place for you and that's why islam does not build such kind of careless identity once you see it say this is not islam yes some muslims they misuse the religion they misbehaved they corrupted earth as well as some other religion followers other ideology followers it's not a problem of a religion it's a problem of a human weakness a human weakness not a religion while islam made it clear even if there is a war during the war the other party the enemy said I declare I don't want ha I don't want any more war what the Islam said when if they want to stop the war and go through a truth then go for it let's make a peaceful situation if those people are fighting you and the only way is to is just to fight them back okay fight them back but if they stop you have to stop and then if there is a fight, if there is a war, make sure, do not destroy a house, do not kill, you know, do not cut a tree, do not kill an innocent, do not kill a kid, do not kill a woman, do not kill a wounded person, an injured person in the battle. Just fight those who are fighting you. This is Islam. It's, as a Muslim, I have to respect others' rights because my job is to be a good brother to others, a good help to others. I have to feel that I belong to this humanity and my role is to improve this humanity. And Islam made it very clear, through your good deed, you can convert people to Islam, not the opposite. La ikraha fi deen You cannot force others. And that's why we see we in, in, in this globe, we see so many countries. The people of those countries converted to Islam not because of force or power. They converted to Islam because they saw the good identity of Muslims, which nowadays we are misusing it. When you go to the West, when you go as an immigrant to the West, Islam will tell you you have to obey their rules. Because once you get your visa, it's like a contract between you and the government. Therefore, you are not allowed to steal. You are not allowed to cheat. You are not allowed to say, oh, I'm divorced and you are married to get some governmental benefits. You are not allowed to, have, to steal from the bank or a credit card. You are not allowed to cheat on an insurance company. You are not allowed to be a bad neighbor. You are not allowed to hurt your neighbors. You are not allowed to, be, to disrespect any uh, laws, whether it has to do with regular laws or other laws. Even while you're driving, you have to respect the speed limits. All this. Are you aware of that? By that, Islam is showing you the real identity. And that's why once you have this identity, I call you a believer. 
If you don't have it, you are just a Muslim. That means nowadays in USA, for instance, this guy is an immigrant. Then the status green card. Then the status is a citizen. Then the status good citizen, bad citizen. Misdemeanor, no misdemeanor. Isn't that we have? In Islam, when you enter to Islam, the first step is to be Muslim. Once you start gathering the attributes of this Islamic identity, the real authenticated identity that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa taught us and Jesus, peace be upon taught us, and even the prophets before Jesus showed us, once you gather all these attributes, or you at, at least you have some of them, then you go from a Muslim to the second level, a believer.